Welcome back. In April 1977, Robin Davidson abandoned her city life. She made her way to the centre of Australia and began a trip of more than 1,600 miles of hostile outback towards the Indian Ocean. She was paid $2,000 by a magazine in return for photos of her trip, and with just four camels and a dog named Diggity for company, she made the life-changing journey. Well, some time ago, Robin wrote a book about her experiences, and now her story has been adapted for the big screen. We'll talk to Robin herself in just a moment. But first, let's take a look at the film. Will you walk to Warburton with me, Eddie? Hey? To Warburton? Will you walk with me? Long way, Warburton. Or a little bit long way. Long way? Yeah, long way. Mm. My my shoes no good. Okay. Mm. Looks good in your shoes, huh? Do you think he's up for this? It's over two hundred miles. Him? <laughs> He'll have walked the two of us. Don't forget my telegram. Well, that's uh, Robin Davison being played by Mia Wozikowska. Good morning to you, Robin. It's lovely to see you. You too. Um, what an extraordinary story. So you take mm. us back. You decided, age 26 or something, to mm. go on this ex a an amazing journey. Well, I was 24 when I went to Alice Springs to prepare for it. Yeah. Um, and I thought it was going to take me six months or something to find a few wild camels and train them and head off into the bush. Um, and that period ended up being two and a half years, and just as well it was that long because that's when I had to learn absolutely everything. I had to get the camels, train them, build their saddles. Um, and I wasn't a particularly competent young woman, so it was an intense training period. And then I set off. It was a nine-month journey altogether. I had yeah. no idea that there are more camels in Australia than there are anywhere else in the world. Yeah, and they're doing very well. Well, they came in the, the late 19th century to... They're imported from what's now Pakistan, along with their owners, uh, to open up the desert areas. Um, and, of course, once they'd opened up the desert areas, then there was no more work for them, so they were let go. <clears throat> and they became feral, and now they're doing very, very well, too well. Feral yeah. and quite dangerous, actually. Yes, the males in season can be very dangerous. Um, so you decided to go <coughs> on this extraordinary journey, and you were helped along the way, mm. um, because obviously finances was an issue, by National Geographic. Yes. <laughs> you always have to say, you get in the film, you're very yeah. suspicious about it, and you are now still. Well, well I, I felt that I'd sold my soul, really, after all this effort, because... You know, it was a very personal and private gesture. I didn't want anyone else involved. I'd never intended to write about it. And also, quite naively, I didn't think anyone would be interested. Mm. Uh, so right towards the end, I thought, no, I absolutely have to have that $2,000. Um, so and I these wrote are some to of the pictures Disney that Rick Smollin, the photographer, yes, took on, your, on yes. your trip. So I was quite resentful towards poor Rick. Um, he came out three times during the journey. Um, and he represented everything I was trying to get away from. So, uh, yeah. but you know, now I look back at those photos and they're so beautiful. But it was for you. It was um, an exercise in in in, in solitude. You you are yes. the sort of person just you just want to be away from everybody. I did then. I just knew instinctively that that's what I needed to do at that time. Mm. Um, and of course. The irony of that trip, or the paradox, is that the more I tried to disappear beneath the radar, the more everyone seemed to want a bit of it, or a the, bit of me. Kept, kept oh. of calling you the camel lady. Yes, yes. Yeah. Well, the Aboriginal mob called me desert woman, which I think is a step up from camel <laughs> lady. And they really helped you, didn't they? Yes, they did. 
and I was incredibly fortunate, really, um, that an old Aboriginal man joined me for a section of the trip, and in a way that formed the heart of the journey for me because mm. just being with him and being uh, sort of absorbing the way he was in his country. Mr. Eddie, yeah. and that's the real. Is that's, that the that real is Mr. The Eddie? Real Mr. Yeah. Eddie yeah. Yes. There's an intriguing caption right at mm. the beginning of the film, mm. which says, "I think so, to, to to certain sections of people, if you are from some place or if you are of Aboriginal descent, beware, you may see." Dead deceased relatives. people, now, yes. How does that, what's that well, like? that's because um, traditionally uh, when someone dies, you don't speak their name, you don't see uh, images of them mm. for a long, long time until it is felt that that entity has passed on. And that's changing a lot, you know, as Aborigines um, have to move into... European culture, it is changing a lot, but it's, it's a sign of respect to put so that at the top words, of the film. So in other words, some of the people who are filmed yeah. in the film yeah. may have passed on since the filming. Exactly. Ended. So, oh, you, you know, um, And tell us about um, Mia, the, the young actress mm. who plays you, because mm. there's, people often ask, don't they, who would you like to play you in, in your life? She yes. does an amazing job. She does an amazing job. I always wanted her to, to be the actress. I saw her in, in treatment and I just thought she was sensational. So I'm so because this film has been through many avatars over the years. Uh, I think the one before this was going to be played by um, Julia Roberts, and much as I like Julia, I feel she wouldn't have been right for this yes. film. But it's thirty years, more than thirty <laughs> exactly. years from writing the book. That is about as much as long as you can get apart from literature. Well, isn't it? quite yes, and it's. I'm glad it's taken that long because I'm now quite detached. From from that part yes. of my life, so I'm not precious about it, and I just let the filmmakers get on with it and trusted them, and and I really like the film. Well, it does seem it does appear mm. to be very faithful to the, yes, the spirit. Yes, it, it, and tell about us mm. about your lovely dog, which is played by um, I can't remember the name of the dog it's played by, but yes, lovely can. dog, who was well, a great companion. She too. was. Uh, my dog was a remarkable dog, and of course, in that situation, you get so much closer to the animals. They're mm. substitutes for. Everything. I knew when we saw a black Labrador early on in the film, I thought, this is going to be a good film. <laughs> <laughs> it's been exactly what uh, we both said. And the camels, did they go on to lead happy lives once you finally got them to the... Yes, I left them with very fine people at the end of the journey on a big sheep station. Right. Um, and they were suitably adored That's for the rest of their lives, you know. Oh. Robin, thanks mm. so much. It's a pleasure. It's a meet fascinating you. film. Thank, Thank you. Great film. Robin Davidson. Thank the you. film Tracks is out on April the 25th.